This is for the guy that I met at the art studio in Portland today. <clears throat> Three of the tools that you had were this tool, can't remember what it's called. You had a fingernail gouge, which is a 3H gouge. And then you had your bolt or your uh, roughing gouge, or I can't remember what the name of that one is either. Anyway, this was sharpened at a 45 degree angle. It works fine like that. I also have a larger one which works a lot better if you're doing larger wood, of course. And you can even make these out of a piece of, if you can get you a piece of high carbon steel pipe, anything that's above two and a half percent carbon, you can sharpen it and then heat it up red hot and then quench it in water or oil. Water makes it harder, but you're looking for a 62 Brunel hardness. But there you go on those two. So I have those two. And the bigger one is nicer. I think you have that. As far as this tool goes, I do like this sort of a profile. This is a high speed steel via 62 Brunel hardness. And it's about an inch and a half wide. And the curve, I think, let you have a little better control it is hollow ground all my tools are ground like this by I mean hollow ground and that'll be important because when you sharpen it and I use a easy lap diamond sharpeners and this easy lap diamond sharpener is a fine grade so you can take these sharpeners and as you put it across it's only landing here and here so you just take and do like that and you'll see a little bit of a shininess right across there. You know you're good and sharp. Now as far as this fingernail gouge goes, I don't like these that are this wide with that profile at all. What I prefer, I have a half inch bowl gouge. Notice the the profiles are a little bit different on these. So these will have a deeper groove and then you can take, you've got more of a curve to that. And this angle here on this one is about a uh, 50 degree angle, 50 to 60 degrees. Then one of my favorites is a 5 8 bowl gouge and this has a, uh, about a 50 degree angle on it and notice how I, I've got a real good sweep way back here and you can use the scraping qualities of the sides of it or attack your work head on with it so this is a 5 8 one I'm not sure which one I like better the half or the 5 8 but notice I ground both of them just a little bit different there but both of them between 50 and 60 degrees. In addition to that, when I was talking to you about anti-vibration, this is a one inch diameter A2 tool steel, 60 degrees swept back. You can almost see the curve, it's big enough. And just grind this out get it all shaped before you ever harden it and then just harden the tip no reason to do the whole thing and this entire tool here is uh is quite large and quite heavy but it keeps the vibration down now when we talk about scrapers you may have one of these it's a half inch scraper these are sharpened at a 15 degree angle And then I really like the bigger one. It's an inch and a half wide. It's about three eighths thick. And there again, sharpened at about a 15 degree angle, 15 to 20 degrees for a scraper. I would definitely have this as one of my tools to pick. Uh, you could call this a bowl scraper or box top scraper. I've heard it called all kinds of things. So sharp edge bend from the top here, 15 degree sweep. You got your flat, your flat, and then you can even go back to the outside. It helps you to shape the rim of a bowl and to finish off the end of a bowl while it's in a lathe. Very handy tool. 
So these two here are great. The big one though, really light because the bigger the tool, the less vibration. Of course, you've got your standard parting tools you don't have to have. You can use a paint scraper and just sharpen it. Inside bowl scraper made from an Allen wrench. So you can see how that's flat ground. And then you just have a little bit of a profile around there. You don't want it long because it puts put too much torque and wants to turn your hand. Now, when you start talking about inside tools, there is this inside scraper. And the thing you want to do is have this tip here. Whatever you're cutting on, you want it to be in line with this because if you have it too much either left or right, it's going to put torque on your tool. So that's the key, is just to have your cutting edge in line with this and then curve around whatever you're wanting to do. These are okay, but I think a guy can make his own, or you could you could just get you a piece of uh, round stock or something, thread it, tap it, and just buy this carbide bit for about 10 bucks or so a piece. And you'll notice those are also around probably 20 degree sharpen. So you have that type of stuff. Another versatile tool is the round carbide scrapers. There again, you could make your own uh, just and buy the carbide pieces for maybe 10 bucks a piece. And uh, not a big deal to make your own. Pretty nice, but at 100 bucks a pop, don't know if they're worth it. Then you have the tools like this. They're better for doing flat edges as you're scraping along, but you do have four sides before you have to sharpen again. Then you have another tool. So here's an inside scraper. This actually goes, the flat side would go down on your tool rest, and then you have this piece of high carbon steel. It's just a piece of quarter inch steel cut in half, high carbon steel, and you just sharpen that radius, and you can buy something like that, grind it off, and heat treat it yourself. Just cherry red and then dip it in water for high carbon steel. So if I had to choose the set of tools that I would want to work with and I really had limited time, of course I would have this. I would have this half or this half inch scraper for sure. And then the bare minimum I would have this half inch bowl gouge and with these three tools you can pretty much make anything and then of course you make your inside bowl scraper out of an allen wrench so with those four tools you can do almost anything um, you know I hope this helps you out and then uh, I guess also you'd need this tool here too because uh, for making square stock into round this is great and you can also really get a nice smooth edge once you learn how to use this tool. Uh, this is a very versatile tool, but it really has a pretty steep learning curve in my opinion. This is the hardest tool I've had to use. So anyway, bud, I hope that helps you and a lot more people.